as we all know, the original King Kong was an extremely influential film, introducing a new standard for special effects, inspiring others to pursue similar theatrical endeavors, and can even be called one of the first cinematic events in history. So it would make sense that they would follow this movie up with a sequel. In fact, they had a lot of sequels planned, none of which ever came into fruition. And this is the movie you can thank for that. Son of Kong. The only sequel to the original 1933 film, and thank the lord for that. This is a film that, despite its trailer promising lots of thrills, is probably the most boring movie I have ever seen. I have not felt this bored out of my mind in quite a while. So, what makes it so boring? Well, let's get to the story. Carl Denham, the aspiring filmmaker from the original film that brought King Kong to New York in the first place, has found himself in a rut. As a result of King Kong's rampage, lawsuit after lawsuit keeps pouring down on him, up to the point he can no longer show his face around town. So, in an attempt to start over, he joins his old friend, Captain Eaglehorn, in a lucrative business delivering cargo around Asia. An endeavor that is just as unsuccessful as his last one. But their luck seems to change when the man who sold Denim the map to King Kong's island initially informs the two that there is a hidden treasure on the island. One that could possibly help relieve their financial woes. With nothing else to lose and a chance to return to their old lives, Denim and Eaglehorn decide it's time to go back to the island to find the treasure, getting some new crew members in the process in the form of two stowaways, Chinese Cook and Hilda, the former being a hilariously outdated stereotype and the other being a bland love interest to Denim. But wait a minute, you may be asking, where is the son of Kong? Well, that's the thing. Kong's son, officially named Kiko, does not appear until the last half hour. Yes, this movie, which promised a return to and further adventuring of the mysterious Skull Island, doesn't actually happen until the last third. And the son of Kong does not get more than 25 minutes to shine. For a vast majority of the entire runtime, we're just watching Denim and Eaglehorn lamenting, drinking, or watching monkey shows that last longer than they need to, and just spending time in these really boring sets with nothing of interest going on. And yeah, I know the first takes its sweet time getting set up too, but the original was over an hour and a half, and Kong himself appears in at least two thirds of the film. This is barely over an hour, 69 minutes at most. And as a result, the movie just wastes more time than it actually needs to. I mean, to be fair, when it's not just boring dialogue, it does strive to be more so its own thing. As opposed to trying to recapture the original, which it was never going to. Which is a plus in my opinion. When Kiko does show up, the movie does become a lot more lighthearted and comical. And yes, when they actually do land on the island, things do get more interesting. But once again, it's only 25 minutes of Kiko and friends doing stuff. And comparing it to the slog that was the first two thirds, it doesn't make up for the huge amounts of nothing that happens in the other 40 some odd minutes. Oh, and spoilers, but since it's almost like a hundred years old, can it really count as a spoiler anymore? I honestly thought Skull Island sinking with no explanation was kind of a forced climax. It's like, oh, King Kong fell from the Empire State Building, so let's have Kiko drown on a sinking island. I mean, I guess it could be unexpected to some people, but come on, it's a King Kong movie. Unless if it's made by literally anyone else but the original parent company, I think it's safe to say the titular Kong is going to die. <sighs> okay, I think I should just get the elephant out of the room already. The movie itself was made and released within 9 months of the original's release. 
That's right, it didn't even get a full year of production in. And honestly, it really shows. Say what you will about Planes 2. While it was released 11 months after the first, the director said it took at least four years to finalize the concept. But going back to Son of Kong, yeah, its rushed production time really shows. Everything about it feels like a lesser version of the original. The scale, the production, the story, the characters, even Kiko himself. While cute in his own way, I just don't think he's as endearing nor as memorable as his father and ultimately only serves as a deus ex machina to get Denim and company out of trouble. After watching this movie, I can understand why any attempts to follow up on the original movie, unmade or otherwise, would completely pretend this movie never existed. Where the first film clearly had passion and effort put into it, this film just feels hollow. It lacks the soul the original had. I mean, I don't think it'd be a contender for the worst King Kong movie, not by a landslide, but it's probably the most forgettable. Truth be told, if you want to see a different take on the King Kong mythos that isn't just a rehash of the original, stick with the MonsterVerse. Or heck, even stick with Toho, because, as is, this is the one King Kong movie anyone can easily skip. I hear the next King Kong movie is planning on tackling a similar concept, but I think it's safe to say, regardless of how that film turns out, this movie is definitely one big pile of monkey dung.